Special Operations, Covert Ops, Espionage, The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Yeah. Okay. So it was actually Columbine that came first then. Okay. In yes. terms of the flexion. Mm-hmm. So the attack on Columbine, Eric quickly saw the opportunity there that he didn't think that the, uh, the, the police forces were reactive enough, right? That, mm-hmm. that they were standing off instead of going in. Right. Um, so he set up something down, down at Blackwater called Are You Ready High School? And they started bringing in cops. I mean, hundreds and thousands of policemen from around the country to train at Blackwater. So that was the first one. They finally got their legs and started making some money. And that was to train folks how to go and go after an active shooter. Right. Okay. Right. So that was that was big for Blackwater. The second big thing for Blackwater was the USS Cole. So that's when the Navy discovered that those, those sailors up there um, uh, on deck carrying those M14s didn't know how to use them. So uh, the entire East Coast fleet uh, was sent down to Blackwater to train in small arms. So that was the second big contract. So he started getting all the police, local, state, county police, and then he started getting uh, the East Coast, uh, uh, the entire East Coast Navy. So those were the two big inflection points. And then it was really when we went into Iraq that the business completely took off. Mm -hmm. And when... um, There was a contract that went out to all the security companies, uh, basically to provide security guards for the green zone. Uh, And most of the folks in uh, David, you'd mentioned earlier, like the crucible, Mm -hmm. um, you know, my good friends, Kelly McCann and Jack Stradley, they looked at that contract and they said, we'd love to do that contract, but it's not possible for us to put people in there with the equipment you want to legally in the time frame you want us to. Right. So right. folks like the Crucible and uh, T Triple Canopy, you no know, Gar, and a bunch of folks that they basically said, we can't even bid on that contract. Blackwater raised their hands. They said, we'll do it. Mm-hmm. They just shipping contractors into the green zone. And uh, that business went from zero to 3,000 contractors uh, in the course of about eight months. It it was interesting because I mean for for security for interpreters for services like there was this immediate need for these mass amount of peoples and generally the companies that had like these GSA contracts right the the just kind of the open ended contracts for government services were able to find a way to to utilize those contracts to get in there and and there was a need I I I don't. You know, I don't think anybody would argue that the security personnel, like all these support personnel weren't weren't necessary and the military couldn't do it. Um, but you had some really shady organizations going on. I remember like the one organization, Custer Battles, was like meeting their guys at the border with like broken down AKs and like there was a lot of shady stuff going on. Oh, no, there was a lot of shady stuff and the Blackwater guys weren't shady right they, they just they weren't trained properly right and i want to go back to my first meeting down in blackwater and you know kind of set the tone on culture because this is permeate permeated for the, the next 25 years then so if you kind of look at the culture the first time i went to blackwater i mentioned al clark who was a firearms instructor um you know in, in the seal teams i think with seal team eight but maybe with some other teams too um and Al was, he was really good on the range. And I remember going down to the range and I'm talking to Gary Jackson, who became the president of Blackwater. And you could just feel the tension. I could feel the tension between Eric and Al. And there's another guy in there, and I think his name, name was Dale Ford. And I pulled Gary aside. I said, what the hell's going on? He goes, well, we're going to have a gunfight. And I'd been watching Al on the range for the last hour. And I'm like, if you're having a gunfight, I'm on their team. Um, but, you know, that kind of started the culture, you know. If you're looking at a business, a contra, a PSC business, mm-hmm. PMC business, like a Dine Corp, it starts with a very, you know, it's got compliance, it's got leadership, it's got rules, it's got that. Right. This started with four SEALs 
on the range. Five years later, there's 3,000 of them being deployed. Right. And right. there was no infrastructure, and they never caught up with it. Right. In terms of the things that are important to make sure things are done right. Right. You know, it started with, we're going to have a gunfight, to literally seven years later, we've got four bodies hanging from a bridge in Fallujah of Blackwater contractors because something went wrong that didn't have to go wrong. Right. Yeah, you. I, I know that like uh, like TC and some of those other companies, they had very strict like quality control standards. Um, they had a training program that if you messed up, you were out. Things like that. But I think Blackwater just got this contract. And you know when you're tr when you when you tell the government that you can have you know 800 people with these qualifications overseas in this amount of time, you don't have those people on hand. You're not paying them. So you've just got to start flooding people. Yeah, and the problem is once you start trying to catch up, you can never catch up. Right, right. And, you know, Gary Jackson, who ended up running Blackwater for most of the time up until 2007, Gary is a great guy. He, uh, SEAL Team 8, other SEAL teams, did a lot of uh, drug interdiction stuff in, uh, you know, the Caribbean and South America. Uh, and I loved spending time with Gary as much as any other human being on the face of the earth. He was a lot of fun. He was full of energy. But he was a SEAL, and then he was running a company doing $500 million a year in revenue, like four years later. Right. He had zero training for that. Right. The legal and the compliance and the quality control, right. it just never, ever caught up. And that's why, to those of you that spend time over there, Blackwater probably felt and looked out of control. Well, it was out of control. And, uh, you know, that, that was kind of proven out, obviously, in Nisor Square in 2007. But, you know, the, the fact remains that Blackwater ultimately, their two top executives pled guilty to firearms violations. Um, Eric himself had to uh, sign up for a deferred prosecution agreement for the same firearms violations and sanction violations. Uh, and after Nisor Square, the business more or less fell apart. So in the initial part, because I talked about like what Custer Battles are doing, how did Blackwater manage to, to get the weapons, you know, into, because they're security guys, they've got to have weapons. They're not getting... No, there's no arms room, military arms room they can draw from. How did they manage to get the weapons into the country? And was it, I, I, did they have to fudge it initially? Uh, I think initially they did. I, I heard a lot of stories from a lot of the guys around that office when I'd go down there. And I just, I'll just leave it at that. I think they did uh, in order to get the, all the folks in there and the weapons they needed to, uh, to equip them. Uh, you know, so that early part of, what with this 03, I guess, uh, you know, I think that was just chaotic Yeah. Uh, for Blackwater. But, you know, they, they kind of caught up a little bit on that front in terms of the logistics front. Right. You know, so by the time we got to, you know, Fallujah in, uh, was that 04? Um, you know, Blackwater, it, it was running pretty well in terms of, it was clicking, it was making a ton of money, but it was growing like crazy. And, you know, it went from, like I said, basically um, a couple thousand acres in the swamp and some ranges being built. You know, now they had 3,000 contractors. They had a new headquarters building. They had two airstrips. Um, they had 25 ranges. They had ranges built just for the CIA that none of us would, could go down there to. Um, they had the best ranges in the country. Um, they had a air, 72 aircraft. Uh, that were, you know, moving around in uh, Iraq and I Afghanistan, you know, so the business between 01 and 04 literally went from 15 million a year in sales to 400 million a year in sales, which is, which is you know, a bit insane. Um, and uh, they were starting to get their legs. They were bringing in more professional contractor folks mm -hmm. to help with the contracts. They were trying to catch up with uh, attorneys and compliance folks, although I don't think they ever did. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 
then, you know, Fallujah happened, which threw their reputation into a little bit of a tailspin, but it also made them really well known, right? You know, those were the Blackwater contractors. They probably made more money because of that. Uh, and then the end of Blackwater, even though Eric didn't sell it to 2010, and I advised them on that sale, came in 2007 with the Nisor Square shooting. Right. Now, can and, you tell us for, for the people who may not be aware? 